Improv Tipsters, Paul Valancourt here, back with another Improv Tip. In fact, today I am bringing you the fourth of my six-part series about set games for the Herald. This has been an absolute joy to make. Uh, not only have I gotten to uh, get some great feedback from you guys, it's really fun to sort of give you this information in a way that I that the Improv Tips haven't usually been so instructive, but it's great to be able to share these games in this way. The other thing is that I usually make these Improv Tips just sort of all alone in my office at <laughs> crazy hours of the day and night, and now I got to really get out there and mix it up with some some players and, and give notes and see some improv happening. It's just, it's really great. It's what I really love about improv is that sort of community feeling that sort of like once in a lifetime, here's this special moment that we're all sharing together. Uh, and it was great to sort of be a part of that for these uh, for these videos. So today's video, what's it about? It's about a, one of my favorite games, of course, otherwise we would not have included it in this uh, series. It's called Town Hall Meeting. What I love about Town Hall Meeting is it is very similar and very close to, in a lot of ways, last week's game, which was Everybody Get In Here. But in this one, we're adding this really exciting element of breaking the fourth wall and going into the audience, right? This is really fun. This is what I think uh, improv is really is fun. Is it, it adapts and it evolves and it changes and it and it challenges the. Um conventional structures of theater, right? And so this is what we're doing. We're going into the audience, we're breaking the fourth wall. I think that's a super fun element of it. Another super fun element of it is that we are, uh, it has so many skills like all of these games do, that's why I included them. It has so many skills that we can use not only in this game per se, but also we can hybridize them into other sort of scenic elements, other games or maybe parts of the, parts of the Herald. Let's say someone is giving a, a graduation speech, right? Well, people can stream into the audience and be other people attending that speech and they start asking questions maybe or sort of opens up and sort of now, now that scene has evolved in, into something else. But one of the things I love about breaking the fourth wall and really sort of being in and amongst the audience is that it takes uh, the, the show from being like a presentational experience to being an immersive experience. Now we're in it as an audience member. I'm sitting next to a player. Maybe they draw me into it, right? And now I'm in it with with them now it is all we're all sort of mixed up in it together where does the show end where does life begin that's a really fun element of the game so I don't want to say too much more about it I've saved plenty in the video coming up um, I think that's it here we go sit back relax and enjoy town hall meeting Hey everybody, I'm Paul Valentor. Welcome back to Improv Tips. Today I am presenting the fourth in my six part series of set games for the Herald. Uh, if you check out this ding ding playlist here, you'll see all the ones that have come before. Uh, and today we're presenting the fourth one, which is Town Hall Meeting. One of my favorite games. Last week we did, uh, in this video, ding ding, a game called Everybody Get In Here. Now this is kind of like Everybody Get In Here, but it adds the dimension of breaking the fourth wall and going into the audience. Let's talk about how it goes. Like all these games, it starts off with a clear call. In, in town hall meeting, I'm going to, um, well, let's backtrack for a second. In every day, um, everybody get in here, I am calling from here, from the point of the flying bee. You'll see in that video if you go check it out, right? And for a lot of our other games, I'm down here in the narration spot, right? But for this one, for town hall meeting, I'm coming straight down, and I'm talking to the audience directly, and a lot of times I'll have a podium here waiting for me. All right, uh, people of Elgin City. Uh, today we have a, uh, a debate before us, and we want to hear points for and against. And so now I'm saying it's a debate before us and for and against. And so once I start this, right, okay, townspeople, Elgin City, calm down, calm down, quiet down. What's going to happen is as I'm doing that, the players on the side know that it's a town hall meeting, and they're going to stream into the audience and take some seats in and amongst the audience there, right? So now they're, so now we're sort of like playing this three-dimensional space where they're in the audience and there's some action on stage and some action in the audience. So I'll set it up. Townspeople of Elgin City, please, everyone relax, calm down, calm down, we're about to start. And then I'm going to set up as views for and against pro and con on whatever the issue of the day is, right? So let's say it's skateboards, right? Skateboards. All right, people, we have a resolution before us for and against, should we allow skateboarding in our fair town of Elgin City? Let's hear some opinions for and against. So at that point, I've set it up for and against skateboarding. We are not, like everybody get in here, brainstorming. It's not a brainstorming thing. It's for and against. People who like skateboarding, people who don't like skateboarding, okay? So they're gonna stream to the audience sort of how they are now, and what's gonna happen is, one by one, they'll stand up, right, and they'll address the crowd, the audience, and the rest of the townspeople of Elgin City, and they'll say, generally, their name, kind of who they are in town, and what their opinion is, right? So if I'm here, I might stand up and say, all right, 
My name's Frank. You all know me. I'm the woodworker in town. I got the wood shop out on the edge of town. I love skateboarders because they are really hard on skateboard decks. They break them, they break them, they're doing grinds and ollies and mick twists. And mick, I don't know what they're doing. All I know is a lot of business coming in and if you outlaw skateboards, you might as well just shut down my factory. All right? You just might as well shut down. Yay, skateboards! Go skaters! Right? And then I'll sit back down. Okay? Now the trick is, where people get sort of drawn in sometimes, is they buy into the reality of the thing too much and they end up saying all my things up to the, the mayor, right? It's not really a town meeting. It's not really a town meeting. It's just, it's, a, it's the simulacra of a town meeting. So once I get the okay from the mayor, then I'm going to turn on and plead my case to the rest of the citizens, including the audience members. Right? This is my time. If you have like, this is a time to, to show characters. We don't focus a ton on characters really uh, so much in these in these uh, set games. This is like all about character. I'm gonna get up. I'm gonna say my name, kind of who I am in this town or whatever, and then for and against. Right? And then I sit back down. Now, just like in uh, in in everybody get in here. Right? Last week we were talking about this about what does that mean about that person? What does that mean about that person? Right? Check that out in the video. Same thing here. As, as we're sort of building these, and we know I'm Frank and owns a wood shop, then maybe someone else will stand up and say, well, you know what, Frank, I, I, uh, my name's Tom, and I own the local, uh, the local uh, first aid uh, supplier, and uh, you know, I love it, the skateboarders get injured all the time, but it's dangerous. They're getting hurt all the time. Now, you're making tons of money off these skateboarders, and so am I, but I don't think it's right. I think this is blood money. Literally, in this case, blood money, right? So uh, I'm against skateboard, 100% against, right? And so maybe you applaud, applaud at the end, or each one person sits back down, so and so, right? So we're still building these relationships and we're stacking these things one on top of another, just like we did, and everybody get in here. So I may have a relationship with someone else in the town, I may know them, right? Or I may know something about their backstory, or I may agree with them or disagree with them, right? So we don't want to be like, a single thing, single thing, all these single things exist in the context of the town. Does that make sense? Yeah. Right? So we're just going to go through, bing, bing, bing. Now there's <clears throat> we have eight players today. We'll have seven because one won't be in there. So maybe all seven of them talk, maybe all seven of them don't talk, right? As, as the person who is the mayor or who's leading the meeting, right, my job again is time and traffic control. Right? So if it sort of breaks out, it's like, okay, all right, I'm gonna calm down, calm down. There's a couple more people we need to hear from, and then I'll see who wants to, right? And a lot of times we'll, in, the, in the audience, we'll raise our hand, right? And I'll say, okay, yeah, I know you have something to say, so I'll call on you, whatever, right? Now, my th one sort of technical issue for me is, I don't want to call on someone by name, right? I'm gonna say, okay, what do you have to say, right? I'm just gonna throw it to them, and then they're gonna stand up and say their character, right? Because if I see Chell and I say, all right, Tom, what do you want to say? And he's like, oh, I'm actually Marjorie or whatever. <laughs> like, like, he's got something he wants to say. I just want to facilitate him saying it, whatever that is. If I say Tom or whatever, I'm shutting it down and having one mind work on the problem. If I just direct traffic to him, all of our brains are working on the problem. Because he gets to say what he's thought of. Right? That makes sense, right? Again, so opening it up, but at the same time, opening him up. Right? Making way for him, facilitating his thing. Bing, 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 bing. Sometimes the audience, maybe I sit next to an audience member, I'm like, oh, this is my, this is my, wife, this is my wife Sharon, and I'll have an audience member with me or whatever. Right? We can sort of play, there's all these different layers that we can add to it. But the basic thing is, a clear call. All right, townspeople, settle down, settle down. As that's happening, as I'm saying settle down, that's when they're streaming into the audience, right? We're covering the transitions. Then I'll say, okay, here's the issue. For and against skateboarding in our town whatever it might be. Then, facilitating, facilitating, facilitate, right? Maybe sort of calling back. And then I'd say, well, I'm trying to keep track of like how quick it's going, how's it going, and maybe there's a big laugh, or maybe that, that's definitely the final one. I'm like, okay, okay, now let's call it for a vote. <laughs> all right, all of those, by applause, this is super important to me, personally, because I think this is the way it works, is by applause, how many people are for skateboarding in our town? Well, here's some applause. By applause, how many people are against? And then that second, as that second applause is going, everyone is streaming back on stage, and so that applause is covering all this sort of, all that noise, right? Otherwise, it's super loud and super awkward. So I'll say, all right, final vote, all those against, let's hear a real applause. So we're applause, and the audience joins in with applause and covers the transition, everyone's up here, and then all I have to do once everyone's back on stage is, okay, sounds like that's passed, we're gonna have no skateboarding any longer in Elgin City. All right, come back next week, we're gonna be talking about XYZ, whatever that thing might be.
okay? Or please join us at the back for some coffee and donuts brought in by Marjorie. Thank you, Marjorie. Whatever that thing might be, right? Just some sort of wrap up and then into the next scene. Okay? It's pretty simple, right? Again, call, setups, remember to address the entire crowd. That's super important. And then relationships, relationships, don't be afraid to address or talk about someone else who's already talked. Okay? All right, that's the setup of town hall meeting. Let's get the players on stage and have a try. I will give uh, the players a suggestion uh, to start them off. The suggestion is the suggestion is hardware. Here we go, hardware. All right, everybody, and settle down, settle down. Welcome. Okay, take your seats, take your seats. Charlottesville, we're under attack, or I should say, we're here because we don't know if we should make things out of metal anymore. So uh, we're gonna go ahead and throw it to the floor, whether we're for or against metal projects, all right? Yes, sir. Yeah, you folks know me, I'm uh, Vern Sheffield, and I'm the local butcher shop, and obviously metal's really important to me for what I'm doing when I'm cutting up the meats and the animals, so I'm just gonna say that we need to uh, keep the metals in our community. That's my opinion, okay? Thank yeah, you. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Floor uh, yields. Go you, ahead. Uh, you all know me, Beatrice. I own the local apothecary in town, and I think metals in our systems really ruin our cells. They ruin all of our structure as people and degrade our humanity in Charlottesville. Thank you, Beatrice. Thank, Thank you. you. That was nice to open up your aura. Yes, go ahead. Yes, yes, hi, it's, it's me, uh, Robert Williamson. I, I, own, I own the local plastics factory, as you all know. Plastics, it's the future. Uh, realistically, we don't need metal anymore. It's, it's, it's unnecessary, it's, it's outdated, it's, it's an old process. And if we all just embraced plastics, everyone would be much happier, especially me. Huh. Yeah. Give him another round of applause. Yeah. Thank you for your donation. Uh, yes, yes, yes. Mary Jo uh, Smith, and I own the button up or shut up button shop. <laughs> and I agree with you, plastics are great. Plastic buttons are so good. Metal is not good. Metal can cut you and hurt you, and we don't want to use that. Mm. Um, and I just wanted to say that Carl told me that there were supposed to be chocolate chip cookies and they're only oatmeal. No personal attacks. No personal attacks, all right? Let's calm down the personal attacks. Uh, you, you've had your hand raised a little bit. Yes, I'm Juanita. Y'all know me, I'm the local puberty and sex education coach for the parents in the area, Thank guiding you. their youngsters through that tough transition in life. And I think we need metal. It's hardcore, it's all that. By the way, thank you for guiding our children through puberty, Coach. We appreciate you. Yes, you in the back. Yeah, well, you all know me. My name is Harry Humperdinck, and I'm the decorated war veteran in this town. And I gotta tell you, if it weren't for metal, thank you, just yeah. got a second. Thank you, yes, if it weren't for metal. Let's all stand up for his service. That's yeah. right. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Yeah. If it weren't for metal, I would not be standing here before you as you see me. I got metal in my foot, metal in my leg, and god damn it, metal in my head. So I am definitely for metal. Uh, I'm sorry, Hi, coach. Can I please again? Yeah. What? Oh, all right. Yes, I just, yeah. I, I just, I just want you to know if, if you had plastic, uh, plastic, it would be, it would be more durable. Uh, it, 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 would, it would hold you up better. It's lighter. I just, I want you to think about plastic. I can, I can give you plastic parts. Let's all calm down. Let's all. One more. One well, more. I didn't want to bring this up here, but I think uh, we all need to know that Beatrice is apothecary. She's actually selling uh, the. The funny weed out of there is what she's really doing. Hey, no personal attacks. I'm just saying, no personal attacks. All right, all right. I'm also for for the weed. That's my medicine. All right, all right, all right. Let's just take a vote. Let's just take a vote and settle this once and for all, Charlottesville. How about that? All four medal, please have a round of applause.
talking about too much. So if we're gonna, who's it? Shall we do the So if there's only one person left, do you have something? Huh? You had something to say, right? Uh, yeah. Yeah. So there's, if there's, one, if we're gonna do almost everyone, let's do that last one. Okay. Yeah. It's, it's, it's just a judgment call, right? I think we do like three, or we do a model, kind of, you know. But I thought really great, nice. I thought really what I really loved about it was once we got the initial things out, then we started playing relationships, right? So the game goes from just the game to now a group scene, which is kind of what we like, right? We sort of start with this real um, strong foundation of the set game, and then we open it up. But we've got that thing that's grounded us, right? I thought that, I thought that was really fun. And we had relationships with each other. Um, a couple times I was like this, I was in the line, sort of coaching on the side of this. So the thing to keep in mind is as I stand up, especially if you're sort of mid-audience, right? Where, John, where you were. Uh, yeah. So I'm sort of mid-audience, right? I still need the, although most of the people are down here, I still want to keep pleading it out to anybody who will listen, right? I'm sort of like oscillating back and forth. Hey, everybody, here's my, so I really want to share it with the whole crowd, right? right. And, and I think you did a good job of that, but I was like, you saw me like, yes, yeah, it's right? Yeah. But it, it makes a big difference because it truly shares it out, um, especially in a big, a big house with a lot of people. Um, I thought that was really great. I thought the vote at the end was nice. I was working up. I would say at the, at the vote at the end, come up on stage and then just adjourn to the wings because then that's really the end of the game is that final vote. And that's just a transition and falling action. And then Chell does his, like, his little sort of wrap up at the end. And then we're clear to go to the next scene. If everyone's still on stage, then we have a second ending, a second transition. Do you guys see what I'm saying? From on stage to off stage. So when we come up, we're just adjourning to the wings, getting ready for that. Next thing, as he finishes his wrap up, whoosh, we're into the next scene, right? Super simple, that's the whole game. It's really simple, it's closely related to everybody getting in here, it has a couple different dynamics, but that's it, let's do one more. And there you go, man, that's the game, that's as simple as that. I mean, everything else from here is practice. They pretty much got a handle on it, they pretty much sort of know what it's all about. Most of my notes are staging notes, you know? Um, one of the biggest things, one of the hardest things for people doing this game is to get to break the habit of just talking to the mayor or whatever, or the person who recognizes them from the stage, right? Because that is a human thing, that I talk to the person who's talking to me, right? But once you're recognized, or sort of say, okay, you talk now, once you're in the audience and you're that person, who it's, it's you have the conch and you're sort of speaking, you need to remember that as a player, you need to share with the whole audience, people in front of you, people behind you, people are gonna be looking like maybe they're, or maybe they're looking behind like this. They're sort of all taking it in, right? It is that immersive experience now. It's not just uh, proscenium. Now it's like theater in the round. You're in the middle of this thing. You're in the theater, right? You're sort of all around. So it's all around you, happening all around you. So you just really need to remember to share that. And that's the hardest thing, honestly, for people to do. I think that Chell does a really great job of a, a super strong call, really nailing down here's what it is, for and against metal. Well, I mean, it's such a random thing. But once that's out there and it's super clear, then everyone's sort of like, I really believe that the creativity comes from sort of like narrowing down a little bit, right? I think one of the hardest things is, is uh, especially in improv, is when someone says, okay, just do a scene about anything, right? Once we get a suggestion, that sort of a chameleon, quadrillion things that it could be narrows down. Oh, metal, okay, so now I'm sorry, narrowing down on that and what does metal mean to me, right? We see a bunch of different uh, interpretations or uh, sort of takes on what metal means, right? Um, I think that's really interesting. So so that nice, strong call helps the caller, helps the players. Um, it's, it's super, super important, and Chell does a really great job of it. Um, the other thing I really love about this version of it, or what they start to do here, and I sort of mentioned in the notes, is that it, it, the, the game grows, as it's going, the game grows, and it sort of transcends the rules or the structure of the game, which is like turn taking, your turn to talk, your turn to talk, your turn to talk, and now it becomes a group scene, and that's really what we love. That's really what we want it to be, is that we sort of have this scaffolding or this structure that's supporting us and lifting us up, lifting us up, lifting us up, and then we sort of transcend that scaffolding, and now we're into a bigger realm. It's a group scene, right? That's what we're trying to learn, is those scenic dynamics. Right? And we can take that to other games, we can make up our own game, we can use that in scenes that happen to be group scenes. All of these things are skills that we're learning from this very simple game of town hall meeting. Okay, let's see another one. Fantastic, well we heard some notes, now we're gonna have another try at it in a second. But I just wanna say what I love about this game is that it, it, it can be so many other things, right? It can obviously be a town hall meeting, that's fantastic. But what if it's, all, okay, listen up, Walmart employees, right? So now it's a bunch of Walmart employees. Or, okay, seniors, listen up, seniors, we're going for and against pudding, whatever that thing might be. But now we're a bunch of seniors, right? So I'm putting a big frame around it when I, when I introduce the game. But it's all the same dynamics, 
But now it's Walmart employees or seniors or okay, cross country biker association, great, or or you know motorcycle gang, whatever it could be, whatever. But I'm putting that big frame. But all the dynamics are the same. All the dynamics are the same in the game. But that's what I love about it is there's so many different ways to apply this skeleton of a game. Okay. So with that in mind, I will give a suggestion, and uh, you guys can play whatever version, town hall, whatever version you want to play, just using what we've learned. Um, the suggestion for the second round is going to be um, is going to be finances. Finances. Here we go. All right. Welcome, H and R Block shareholders. Please uh, settle down, take your seats, uh, find yourself a nice spot. I hope you got some coffee. Great, great. All right. So uh, we wanted to uh, address today a concern that everyone's been having, uh, whether or not people should be allowed to keep their money at all. Uh, some people feel that uh, it should all come to us. Some people feel that we should leave them with money. So that's really the, the question is, should we take all of the money from our customers? All right, let's open this up to questions. Uh, you, you, please. Hi, I'm, I'm Bill, Bill Huckleberry. Um, I am for taking all of their money because then my lifestyle would take a dramatic turn for the worse, and I can't have that. I love going out on my vacations every month, so I'm for taking their money. All right, all right, thank you, Bill. All right, and you, oh, yeah, yes, you right there. Yeah, yeah, this is uh, Pat Mellon. I'm uh, also a part time massage therapist, and I really think that we should just give away all their money because I really think that having worldly possessions just is really a drain on the soul. So that's just my my take on it. All right, that was informative. Yes, yes, I uh, you, yes. Uh, yes, my name is Rainbow, and um, thank you all. Thank you, thank you. Um, uh, I like that. Um, I just think everybody should have money, and you know, if you have it, you just give it. You know what I'm saying? I mean, numbers are just numbers, who cares? You know, I mean, life is too, like, you know, you just kind of need to take a little ass every now and then. You do need money for okay, that. Okay, I think we'll be moving along oh, right now. Okay. Yes, yes, you, you okay. had your hand. Yes, my name's Dastin Lee Dave. I think we should take all the money. We should take all that money, wrap it up in some rope, and put it on some train tracks. What do you say? Yeah. Yeah. yeah! Good to see you again, Dastin. Hey. Yes, yes, uh, you, you right there. Yes, it is Charlene von Rustein, and I believe we should take all the money because if they don't realize we're going to take all their money, they didn't deserve to have it in the first place. Uh, my name is Roberta Wabash, and I did not save properly in my whole life, and my life insurance at this company is quite awful, to be frank, so I think we should keep all of the money to make up for our woes and foes and follies and mistaken marriages in life. Yeah, um, so, uh, hi, my name is uh, Shane, Shane, uh, Shane for Shorty, Shorty Shane. I just want to tell you all that, you know, I, I grew up with no money, so I, I really don't see what the big deal is right hiss, here. Hiss, hiss, <laughs> You hiss. Yes. All right, all right. Let's, let's bring it down a little bit. Let's, let's, let's shorty Shane. Was that a shorty Shane? You had anything yeah. you need to say? All right. All right, I, I think that's all, all of our viewpoints here. Oh, okay. You know, I'm just going to say one more thing. Yes. Yeah, right. there you, go. you know, stop hissing. You are not a snake, and you guys are all greedy. Boo. Yes. 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 Ooh, I raised multiple I children. Ooh. Multiple with multiple. On that point, I think we we can have our, our vote. Okay. Now let, let's let's make this clear. So all those uh, in favor of taking all of our clients' money, clap. <laughs> all right. Yay, and yay. All of those opposed to taking all of our clients' money, give a round of applause. Yeah. We are now officially taking every penny from our clients. Wow. All right. Thank you very much. Uh, next week, free cocaine for everyone. Have a good one. <laughs> All right. A nice tax preparation policy of free cocaine for everyone. <laughs> Great. I thought, I thought it was super fun. I thought it was super fun. Um, I think uh, the one thing I'd say is just like, it just pace it up a little bit, just quicker from person to person and say your thing, uh, like energize your thing and say it and then sit down, right? Boom. Just a little bit of energy, a little bit of pace. I'm always in favor of that. Um, 
Uh, I like I like the setup of it. We're all um, you know H and R block, and we sort of all again for and against. I think if we can set up it like for and against, taking all of our clients' money. Who's favor of that? Who's against that? Right? Um, and then um, the last thing was oh, just make sure when you're in the audience, rainbow especially, make sure that you're sort of oscillating to the whole crowd. Right? It's, it's the most unnatural thing, so I want to talk to the person who's talking to me, right? But I really want to share with the whole crowd. Even if there's only one person back there, I want to include them in the thing, right? I love, uh, I love the stacking and the relationships. I thought that was all really fun. Oh, and the last thing for the person who's calling the game, right? At the end, it seems like the balance of the audience is for taking the money from everybody. So I try to put the vote that I think is going to get the most applause second. Because it's just a little bit more cushion, right? And also, I want to end with a bigger applause than a smaller applause. It's a tiny thing, but it's just like a little, a little tweak that sells the game a tiny bit more. Um, super fun. That's really all the notes I have. I think it's a really fun game, it's, especially if you're on a team uh, that, that likes characters or wants to work on characters. This is a super fun, structured, supportive environment for characters because you just have a couple of lines, a few lines to, to get out your character, kind of what your point of view is. And, and if there's not a lot of, uh, not a ton of heavy lifting, not a lot of risk to it. That's a great way to build into that. I'll say also for town hall meeting uh, and for everybody getting in here from last week, this is a really great game where we can even see characters from the Herald pop up in here, right? Maybe someone is struggling with finances there and they end up in this meeting somehow. That's really fun too, right? Because then it, it really stitches the Herald together as one unified thing, not separate pockets of worlds, but one big unified world. That'd be really fun to see. Um, I think that's it. Any questions from you guys? Any questions from you guys? Excellent. So that's Town Hall Meeting. Thank you for watching. Join us next week for another video. Great. Another really great, really fun take on the game. Not a ton of notes again. The one staging note I'll come back to again is, hey man, you got to share with the audience. You're in the audience now, so you need to keep oscillating back and forth like on that thing, making sure that everyone can see you, that you're addressing the entire audience. That's really what it's all about, you know, is, is, is that thing. And that is honestly a thing that I come back to again and again whenever I'm seeing this game, whenever I'm teaching this game, this is the hardest habit for people to break, right? So we'll just, because uh, if we're breaking a natural human inclination, right? So we're just, have to keep that in mind. Um, the other thing I would say is, is pace, always more pace. These games can almost always be more pacey. There's very few times in all my years of teaching and playing these games that I've seen and said, you know what, you guys really need to slow down. <laughs> That's just not where people go. They're sort of like, I think they're sort of like climbing the ladder of the scaffolding and they're sort of like going like, okay, then it's this step, then it's this step, then it's this step. But once they sort of have, they've internalized those and those happen pretty quickly because the games are pretty simple. Once they internalize those steps, then I really want them to let it go and just have fun with it and that will naturally sort of pace it up. And this all comes with practice. We've only done it twice in a row now with these guys. But I think if we just practice it more as a team within you know a couple few more versions of it, they'll be on a really nice, fun herald pace okay and then the final thing is oh and this I, this is something i really really love about about uh, an idea that i was sort of pointing out to the guys and and the ladies in there was that um because it's a big group scene uh, and just like sort of um any of these games really i love the idea of a, a character from the herald showing up in a group game right like i said someone's maybe having financial problems and they end up here right they're gonna add a whole new spin to this idea, right? And, and, and I, the one part I didn't say in the notes that I want to sort of highlight here is that also this is a chance for someone from the game to end up in the Herald further down the line, right? So maybe someone is having troubles. We see this scene, they're not in it, but then we see one of the, one of the terrible uh, stockbrokers here end up as their financial advisor. Oh, mackerel we here it comes like get ready right because we now know a little bit about that person we know that they're 100 percent in favor of taking that person's money right so we go uh oh here it comes it's again it's that gift of expectation that we talk about so many so many videos um so i i, I always love that idea of of the herald not being these separate definite pockets but again that's just like the the scaffolding and the structure of what we call the training wheels here this scene then this scene then this scene then this group game then this scene then this scene then this scene then this group game and then scene scene all these sorts of, that's all just to help us learn that's all just to give us some support right once we have those things internalized once that structure is internalized to us then we can really break it right? Then we can really transcend it in so many ways, but it lifts us up, lifts us up until we're ready to take flight, right? It is there to support us, not to be our prison.
right? And that's one of the great things about the Herald is it is sort of that supportive thing. But one of the things that we need to do is take ownership of it and make sure that we transcend those rules and really get into, let's call it the spirit of the Herald, right? The spirit of the Herald, which is Again, I'll go back to Dell's final definition of the Herald, which is an aesthetically pleasing arrangement of scenes, games, and monologues. An aesthetically pleasing arrangement of scenes, games, and monologues. That's where we want to go. We we have this structure that help us give a little um, uh, a little structure, a little sort of you know foundation to it. But eventually, we need to let go of that. Right? It's like it's like swinging on monkey bars. You're swinging from one to the other, but eventually, you need to let go of the one behind to get to the next one ahead. Right? That's it, man. That's 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 how it goes. So uh, I thought a really fun game, some really fun renditions. Thank you for watching. We have uh, two more videos coming up after this. Please stay tuned for those in the upcoming weeks. And uh, I'll see you next week. <laughs> we have been the Impromptu Players, and individually we are... Carmen Scott. Allison Norris Austin. Saskia Mueller. Jared Lennon Kaufman. John Meehan. Stan McCullough. Lauren Baumbauer. Michelle Hernandez. And I'm Paul Valencourt. I'm going to link all their social information in the description down below. Ding, 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 ding. You can check them out. Please watch them and follow them. Thanks for watching.